Okay then, my friends. So we saw in the last lesson how to work with futures, which represent the result of an asynchronous task like fetching data. And when we invoke a function that returns a future, then we can use the await keyword to wait for that future to complete before assigning the completed value to a variable, much like we did. Now, the example we used, we simulated a network request by using this delayed method right here. And this created a three second delay after which we ran this callback function and returned a post. In this lesson, I wanna replace this logic right here to cause a delay with an actual network request to get some data to see how all of this kind of works together. Now, when we're making a network request in Dart, we need to use an external package called HTTP. Now, when you're using external packages in Dart, you can find all of those packages at the official package repository, which is at pub.dev. Now, pub for Dart is a little bit like what NPM is for Node. It's a package manager. It's what you'd use to install packages locally into your projects. The one we're gonna be using is called HTTP. So you can type that into the search bar and hit enter. And if you scroll through the results, it's gonna be this one right here. So when you click on that, you're gonna see the page for that package. And on here, you're gonna see how to install and use it. Now, if you're working locally on your computer, you can see how to install it by clicking this install link right here. But since we're working on Dartpad, we don't actually need to install it. We just need to import it and then start using it. So I'm gonna copy this import statement right here. And then I'm gonna go back to Dartpad and I'm gonna paste it in right at the top. Now, where we say as HTTP here, that means we're importing this package and referring to the top level export from that package as HTTP. So anytime we need to use a method from that package, we'd say HTTP, then a dot, and then whatever method we wanna use. All right, so let's go back to the docs now and see how to use this. So I'm gonna click on this example page, first of all, to see an example of how we make a GET request. And if we look at this code, you can see that first of all, we need to make a URI instance using the URI class and the HTTPS method. So to do that, we pass in the different parts of the URI, the host or the authority, and then the path as well. And then we can also pass in any query parameters as a third argument. But once we have that URI instance, we can then use the get method on the HTTP package and pass in that URI as an argument. And notice here, we can use the await keyword because this get method returns a future, which eventually completes to a response value. And that response value then gets stored in this variable. From the response, we can check the status code. We can also access the response body. So let's go back to Dartpad and give this a quick whirl. So the data we're gonna be fetching then is actually gonna be from JSON placeholder. So jsonplaceholder.typecode.com. And they have different resources we can use. We're gonna go for this endpoint right here to get a single post. So forward slash posts forward slash one. And we can see right here, we have that title property which we have for our post in this class right here. And also they have the user ID property as well, which is an integer. And we have that in our class as well. So they kind of marry up pretty well. So we're gonna use this endpoint to fetch data from. However, we need to break it down a little bit inside this uri.https method. We have the authority right here. So in our case, that's gonna be jsonplaceholder.typeCode.com. So this bit. So. I'm just gonna copy that and we don't want the forward slash. We just want that bit right there. I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna come back over here. What I will do is I will just paste it in as a comment for now, just so we have it. And then if we take a look at this, the second part is the path. So I'm gonna go and grab the path, which is this, copy that. And again, I'm gonna go and make a comment just so we have that right here. And we don't need any query parameters or anything like that. Okay, so now, Let's grab this thing over here. I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it over here. So we don't need this stuff anymore, so we can get rid of that. And instead I'm gonna paste in this URI.https method. All right, so now we can grab this, cut it from there and paste it in here. And the second one we can cut from here and I'm gonna paste it right here. So forward slash posts, forward slash one. We don't need the query parameters like so, so we can just get rid of that. And I'm just gonna put this on one line like so. So we have our URL right here. I'm gonna rename this to URI. And you don't have to do that by the way, that's just my preference. 
Um, now we have this, we can pass it into the get method right here. So all we do is say var response, and you can call this what you want, you don't have to call it response, is equal to await and then http.get. Now we're using await right here. So in order to do that, we have to have an asynchronous function. So we can type async right here, like so. You are gonna see some errors at the minute, but don't worry about that. We're gonna fix them all later on. For now, I just wanna kind of set this up. So underneath this, where we have the URI, what I'm gonna do is say const response, or not const, sorry, final response is equal to HTTP, which is the package dot get, and then we pass in the URI object. Now, remember, we can put a wait in front of that, like so. So now right here, we have this response and we could check the status code if we wanted to, or we could just carry on and do some other logic. But at least now what we're doing is inside this function, we're marking it as async. We have this URI object and we're calling this get method on the HTTP package. So now we have this response. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is I am just going to print the response body down here, just so we can see it. Now up here, I am gonna get rid of that and I'm just gonna call the function as is. So then we have an error down here and the error says the body might complete normally, causing null to be returned, but the type future or, but, right, so let's just get rid of this for now, just to stop this error. So we can call this function, we're trying to fetch the data and we're gonna print the response body. So let's cross our fingers and hope this works. Okay, so that is stalling. So what I'm gonna do is just refresh and I'm gonna try running this again. Let me just move that over there. Try running this again to see if it does work. Hopefully we will see a response in the console. Okay, cool, so now we can see it. We get this JSON object with all these different properties on it. All right, so this is actually a JSON string right here that we have. And we can't just say response.body and then dot user ID for, us, uh, for example, like that. That's not gonna work because we don't have the user ID property on this body. And likewise, it's not a map, so we couldn't just pass in user ID like so. That's not gonna work either because this is a JSON string. So it would be good if we could decode that JSON string into something that we can work with more easily in our code, like a map. So if we head on over back to the example for the package, we can see that they also use this other thing at the top, convert. Now Dart convert is one of the Dart core libraries and not an external package like the HTTP one, which is why the import uses Dart colon and not package colon. So anyway, this gets imported and then we can use a method on that convert object down here called JSON decode. And what this method does is take a JSON string and turns that into a map of type string for the keys and dynamic for the values. And it's dynamic because Dart has no way ahead of time to know what value types are gonna be in the JSON response. But it turns this JSON into a map anyway, so that we can easily access each property individually. So I'm gonna do this now in our code. First, I'm gonna copy the convert import at the top and I'm gonna go back to Dart part to paste this in. Then if we scroll down to our function, we can use the JSON decode method to turn our response body into a map. So I'm gonna write this a little bit differently by saying map, then in angle brackets, string, then dynamic. So what we're saying is we're gonna make a map where the key types are all strings and the values are dynamic. They could be integers, strings, etc. Okay, so then we'll make a variable name. I'm gonna call this data, call it what you want. And then we're gonna set that equal to convert, which is what we imported, dot JSON decode. And then we need to invoke that function as well. Right, so now we just need to pass the response body into that method so it can be deserialized into a map in Dart. And then we can access all those different properties. All right then, so remember, we wanted to return a post from this function. We wanted to type it as such, future, and then post like so. So it's a future to begin with, but then it eventually completes to return a post. So what we need to return down here is some kind of post object, like so, right? Now, when we create a post, we need to pass in the title and the user ID. Now we can get them from the data map now. 
So the first argument is the title. So I could say data and then in square brackets, you want the title key. And we can do that now because this is a map where the keys are strings. So that's a string right here. And that's going to get us the value of the title, which is this thing over here. Okay. Same is true for the user ID. So I can say data and then in square brackets, I'm going to say user ID like so. Okay then, so that is our fetch post function complete. We create the URI like this. Then we use the get method on the HTTP package and pass in that URI object to get the response. Then we create a map where the type in that map is string for the keys, dynamic for the data. We call that variable data. We set it equal to convert, which we imported right here from dart convert. We use a method called JSON decode and we pass in a JSON string, which is on the response body. So that turns the JSON string into a map so we can access properties on it like this. And we pass those properties into the post constructor to create a post object and then we return it. Okay, so now we can call that function up here and we're going to keep the main function to be async because we'll use a wait here in a second. Let's get rid of those comments. So I'm going to say final post is equal to await fetch post. And then if we click on this, we should see, yes, it is of type post. So we should get good code hints now. I'm going to print out some stuff from the post. I'm going to say post dot title, and we get access to that property right there. And then I'm going to say print post dot user ID. Awesome. All right, then. So I'm hoping this is all going to work. Let's run the code now and see what comes up over here. I'm going to make this panel a little bit bigger. Hopefully it's going to work. It is taking some time over here. So again, what I'm going to do is just refresh the page and run it again. If that ever happens, if this stays gray for a little while, just do the same thing, refresh the page because sometimes it does stall. But now we can see we get the title back and also the user ID. Awesome. So let's try this with a different post. I'm going to say two right here instead. And I'm going to run that again. Okay, so we get a different title, but the user ID is the same. Awesome. So then my friends, I really, really hope you enjoyed this series and you learned something along the way. If you did, please, please, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And if you want to access all of my YouTube courses without adverts, also get access to premium courses and early access courses as well, you can do at netninja.dev. You can sign up for NetNinja Pro, which is just $9 a month and also half price for the first month with this promo code right here and for that like i said you get access to every course without adverts without youtube adverts you also get access to exclusive courses not found anywhere else you get access to my premium courses on udemy and also early access to all of my youtube courses as well so the link to this page to sign up is going to be down below again i really hope you enjoyed this series and i'm going to see you in the very next one